Hello, and thank you for spending a little time today to learn more about simulation-driven design and manufacturing. My name is Sean Kreger, and I'm the Technical Director for Altair, helping our partners throughout the U.S. deliver innovation technology to their customers. I'd like to start laying out Altair's vision. Altair transforms design and decision-making by applying simulation, machine learning, and optimization throughout the entire product lifecycle. We were founded in 1985 and are based in Troy, Michigan. With a little over 400 million in annual revenue, over 2,500 engineers, scientists, and creative thinkers, supporting 60,000 users at over 8,000 global customers in 81 different offices. Uh, and we have over 100 software products uh, in our portfolio which is focused on simulation, data analytics, cloud, and artificial intelligence. Now, Altair got its start in the, the early 1980s as a product development and design company. Uh, so we've always had a very um, uh, complete lab uh, where we not only use our simulation technology, uh, but can actually build, test, and validate designs. And this is what almost every customer I work with uh, is doing is either physical prototyping uh, or using the shop room to go through iterations to figure out what is the best design. Starting in 2020, we were all affected by a global pandemic that put everyone in a work from home environment and closed the shop down. So it's an opportune time to learn more about uh, Altair's Inspire platform, which allows you to have a unified environment that will take you all the way from design to simulating the manufacturing process. So we have design and validation tools as part of the Inspire Studio and Inspire Structure Suite. We can use the motion tool to understand performance, um, generate loads, and then take that thread all the way through the manufacturing process, whether we're doing casting or stamping, um, metal extrusions, Maybe we were simulating the 3D, process, uh, 3D additive process. Um, more recently, we've added our injection molding simulations as well as a uh, foaming simulation uh, to, to simulate all the manufacturing processes you might be using today. So let's start by looking at redesigning a rear suspension uh, on a motorcycle. We're gonna use the simulation-driven design process to evaluate the performance efficiency, and manufacturability of our components before we ever build any physical tests. We'll start by looking at a, a motion simulation, load that with multiple scenarios so we can understand what the resultant forces are, and then take those forces to look at different manufacturing types, whether it's main machining, uh, more traditional designs, uh, casting, uh, or additive manufacturing, these can all be simulated directly inside of Inspire. So this really leads us to the question is, what is the best manufacturing method for your project? We can look at conventional castings, traditional machining designs. Uh, we can also look at a, a variety of different uh, additive manufacturing technologies, uh, including uh, additively manufacturing sand molds and then casting them. So to go from design to manufacturing, the first step uh, is to um, define the criteria. So we're going to review an existing suspension component and apply the design to manufacturing uh, process from Inspire uh, to look at replacing a machine component. And our goal here will be to maintain performance without adding any additional weight to this design. So to start, we want to understand how the existing design performs. And in just a couple easy steps, Inspire Motion will allow you to quickly understand all the loads uh, that you're dealing with in your, your assembly. Um, and then can take those and pass those loads directly to an optimization. So in the optimization process, we're going to maximize the available design space. Any surfaces that are used for the original connection points will be maintained so that we can don't have to make any changes to the other uh, assembly components. Uh, but we're going to give the optimization as much room to work with so you can use Inspire to either maximize that design space 
or a third-party product, you can import that uh, original design space into uh, the Inspire environment. Then we'll set up topology optimization, look at different print directions and symmetry constraints. This is a clear differentiator for Inspire that allows you to look at all different manufacturing processes, um, not just additive or subtractive. Once we have a optimized shape, we'll then use polynerbs uh, to develop a final geometry directly from that optimized shape. And polynerbs is a technology that Altair developed to help streamline this process. Um, as you know, more uh, traditional uh, parametric design environments, uh, it can be oftentimes difficult to create these highly organic shapes quickly and easily. And then we can simulate the manufacturing process here we're looking at a 3D print um, of, the, of the part to check out the manufacturability, distortion, and make sure that we have uh, our design set up to uh, meet all the performance and weight characteristics. So let's open up the Inspire model and take a closer look at how we would use the Inspire platform to optimize this pivot. We'd start by setting up a motion model, and in a motion model you can very quickly define joints and springs in a, just a couple clicks and then simulate the performance to understand all the resultant loads. You can animate those loads to understand what the forces are at each joint, how much force the spring is, is uh, putting into the system, and then take all that information and put it directly into a optimization. So here we're adding the design space part uh, by simply loading that in from a file or again, you can create that directly in Inspire. And then we can simulate using all 30 time steps from the motion simulation to see what the design should look like. Here we come back with a free result where there's no constraints at all. Um, this might be uh, good for uh, 3D printing, um, but let's look to see what uh, a cast design might look like. So here, if we have a split in the center of the part, uh, you can see the resultant shape is, uh, is something that might be more suited for casting. We can also use the other split direction to see how that changed the shape for casting. Uh, so both of these examples would be good for casting. Uh, let's also now take a closer look at using uh, an extrusion constraint that you might uh, typically see in a machine design. Um, so here would be an optimized shape uh, having a uniform cross section and more suited for machining. Last, let's explore different ways of using the overhang constraint to optimize a design for 3D printing. Uh, we can quickly change the orientation of the print direction uh, to make sure that uh, we explore all different uh, possible configurations. But you'll notice you get a different design for every single, um, every single print direction. So let's try one more where we uh, actually rotate it around the other direction to see uh, what type of uh, shape we'll get with an overhang constraint. So here the print direction is printing up, and when we optimize this, uh, we get a shape that is uh, uh, probably best suited for uh, additive metal. So we can now create a design using our polynerb tool uh, by either sketching right over top of the part or in the newer versions of Inspire, you can automatically uh, convert this shape into a full 3D geometry. Once you have your polynerb shape, you're then ready to simulate uh, that new part inside of the overall mechanism. So simply reloading that and running the motion study, we can now see how this new part performs and then simulate the structural uh, characteristics of the new design uh, directly inside of the Inspire platform. You can see we're passing all, uh, all the time steps that we ran into the uh, FEA analysis, and we can look at the, here we're seeing the stress in the design itself. Now let's set this up to simulate the additive manufacturing process. So we're going to start by opening up a part file. 
So let's open a Parasolid file, but as you can see, we support all types of geometry uh, that you might have. And here's our rear suspension uh, bracket. We're going to get this set up for 3D printing. So we just open up the Print 3D tab here and simply work from left to right to select the print part. And we're going to print this in stainless 17.4. And then we want to select the printer we want to print this on. Uh, so for this, let's choose a SLM 280. You'll notice it automatically creates our print bed and orients the part, uh, but we have the freedom to change that orientation and uh, quickly explore different ways in which uh, we can optimize the orientation and supports. Now we can orient our part in either the maximum build height We can look at minimum build height. We can also come in and quickly modify the location and orientation to see how those changes will affect the amount of support material required for this uh, print. So if we see this saved one the, from the maximum build height, uh, we're going to choose that to generate supports around. So just click the, select the support button and Inspire automatically creates the supports for your design. Now these supports can be modified and are directly uh, associated with the geometry. So as you make changes to the geometry or you make changes to the orientation, the supports are automatically updated. You can do things like partition supports uh, to create tree type structures. Uh, you can specify whether you want a um, circular support, a square support, or a hollow uh, hatch style support by simply selecting one of the uh, choices from the, the screen here. Once you've got your supports uh, generated, uh, then it's just a matter of you know slicing, looking at the different layers. Uh, you can go um, very easily to look uh, at the different layers of the part. And then you can export that as an STL file that will have both the part file and a separate support file uh, as an STL. You can then bring into your printer package to, uh, to print. Uh, you can also then analyze this by uh, simulating the metal building process. So when we simulate the, uh, the metal building process, we can look at a thermal mechanical or pure thermal analysis. Uh, we can do by layer. Um, we can look at the velocity, include these are the defaults that come from the, the machine you selected at the beginning, but you can modify and tweak any of those settings uh, based on your, your situation and then simply run it. Once your simulation is complete, you can load those results in and we can quickly look at how these, um, how the 3D build process affected things like displacement, um, stress and strain. So if we animate this, this is going to take us through building from layer by layer, looking at the displacements. So this is the build, build portion, then we'll go to the cooling portion, and then the last step will be the supports are removed and we'll see what kind of spring back this part has uh, after the supports are removed. So here we can see in that last step, if we go just back a frame from the supports being on to the supports being removed, we can see what kind of spring back we have and what kind of displacement. So here we can see our maximum displacement is uh, 0 0.03 inches. So this is how the Inspire platform allows you to go all the way from design through manufacturing in a single unified environment. So we got a good look at the additive manufacturing process, but we could apply the same 
process to a, a casting part as well. So if we look at the mount location for this uh, rear suspension, uh, we can run this through the exact same process and come up with a new concept that's lighter and stronger. Now the question is, is can we cast it? And Inspire can answer those questions for you. So the casting simulation was run to optimize the manufacturing process uh, to avoid any defects and ultimately to reduce time and manufacturing costs. So with Inspire, you can simulate just the naked casting to understand where you need to put risers. You can then apply those risers to assure that you've removed all the porosity from your component. And then you can create a complete casting setup to see how the multiple components uh, cast as a family would perform. Let's jump into Inspire Cast and see how the manufacturing process is done on this mount component. Again, we start by opening the geometry file. And again, we use the left to right workflow in the casting tab to set up the uh, casting simulation. So first we'll select the cast part and we identify what the material will be for this cast part. We'll also make this out of stainless. Define the gravity direction. So in this case, we want the gravity direction going in the Y direction. So we can simply move the part around to identify the gravity direction. Then we'll add a gate here on the edge. So you can either designate a surface as a gate or you can uh, add edit gates directly. So I'm just going to put a gate on right here. And we'll just do a quick solidification study to see where porosity occurs in this part. And our job has been run, so we're going to load in those results. And you can see from the solidification run here, we can look at temperature, solid fraction. We want to check out where we're going to have porosity. And we can see the areas in red where we're going to have holes in our part uh, because we don't have any uh, risers here to feed them. Now you can also uh, see this more clearly when you look at the solid fraction result and the last areas to solidify are typically where you're going to have porosity concerns. So to size the risers, let's first determine the solidification modulus that we need to address. So this is solidification modulus of 0 0.2825, 0 0.26. We will use that to correctly size our risers. So under components, we select riser. And we know we need a solidification modulus of 0 0.28. Now, that solidification modulus is if you have perfect contact on top of the uh, porosity spot itself. Because this is uh, slightly offset, we're going to actually make it a little bit bigger. So let's use 0 0.30. You can see our riser is automatically adjusted. And we're going to do the same at these other corners here. Now we can rerun our simulation um, just doing the solidification to see how adding the risers change the uh, design and the porosity. All 
And our simulation has completed. So let's review the results. So we'll first look at our solidification solid fraction and animate that to see if our risers are effective throughout the complete solidification process. And it looks like they have been. Check the porosity to make sure. And sure enough, we pulled all the porosity out of that part by simply adding these risers. So now we have a clean part. We can go back and do a uh, filling run as well to see how the filling and solidification looks. So we'll just turn on filling analysis and then run that one more time. And our filling and solidification results have completed. So we'll click on the green flag and look at the filling results first, see how this model fills. We can see how the liquid metal flows into the cavity. So let's check out the solid fraction and see if our risers did the trick when we did both filling and solidification. And we can see that there's points here in which the riser is no longer effective and will likely have porosity issues uh, in these areas where the solidification happened before the part was completely solidified. So we can come in here and look at the porosity and sure enough we have some micro porosity concerns in those areas. So one of the other solutions that we could look at is possibly putting sleeves over the risers to keep them hotter longer. So in InspireCast, it's very simple to come in and just add sleeves to your risers. Put one there, one there, and one there. And now we have sleeves on our risers. and can see if that additional uh, time that the riser stays hot will resolve the, uh, the porosities. Okay, that simulation is completed with the addition of the sleeves. Let's load in the results and see if it did any better with the solidification. And we check out the solid fraction again. Looks like the risers are being effective, pulling all the liquid metal out. And when we go to check the porosity, everything now is in the riser right where we want it to be. So as you can see with InspireCast, we were able to simulate the naked casting and identify where porosity will form accurately size the risers using the solidification modulus, and then simulate the full filling and solidification with risers and sleeves to confirm we had a good cast part. This is really bringing the shop room floor into a virtual environment. Altair has been a longtime leader in simulation technology, but we also provide industry-leading workload management solutions for HPC and cloud used by everyone from NASA to the Department of Defense, and data analytics suite used by organizations across the globe. But across the board, we're seeing lines between these disciplines blur. Simulation, HPC and cloud, data intelligence are no longer siloed. Organizations need a holistic solution so they can focus on building their business. That's why in July of this year, Altair introduced Altair One. Altair One is one platform that allows users to dynamically and collaboratively access simulation and data and analytics technology across the entire enterprise. And it allows you to scale compute resources to run all these technologies virtually. What can I do with Altair One? Well, first, you can provide scalable resources on demand. As you have new projects come online, Altair One can provide that additional compute resource as necessary. Many of our applications are now able to be run on the cloud, and you can run jobs on the cloud or on premise. Finally, it's a single access to support and licensing, all in a, a unified environment. It allows companies to mobilize resources quickly to meet real time demand, cut down the time to market, while being able to access software and tools on 
any device. The flexible unit system makes it easy to scale and pay for what you need. And it leaves the integration to us, so you don't need to be a cloud expert on all the platforms. In closing, Altair One brings you a value-driven licensing system, a marketplace to access simulation technology and a support community to make you a simulation expert. The Altair Inspire platform is your complete virtual product development environment that cannot be shut down by a global pandemic. I would like to thank you for attending today and thank our valued partners, CATI, for everything they do to deliver engineering technologies to all the innovators among us.